so this is the Dollis desk. We've got this set up. It's a bit of a mess at the moment, but that's what we're here for. We're gonna be cleaning it up and making something new. Most of this stuff that you see here right now is gonna be gone as we get into making the desk. So to get started, the first thing you really need is some form of a sequencer, sampler, and brain to your setup, so to speak. And so I kind of have two options, but the one that I'm planning to use as a brain here is the circuit tracks, because this is kind of a jack of all trades. You've got two internal synths that you can program, and you can also plug this into a computer and make your own patches. You get two MIDI connections, and then you have four drum instruments, but they're really just samplers, and the sampling on this is pretty simple, especially compared to the SP404 to my left, but the difference is this has a much better form of sequencing MIDI and things like that. So I think this is what we'll use as the brain. I can have two internal synths, drums or samples playing, and I can send MIDI to two synthesizers. There are other things you could check out, like um, the SP44 is great, the MPCs are really cool, they have MIDI capability and things like that. Electron makes a few, there's an Octatrack and a DigiTac. Uh, I'm not very familiar with any of those, but I know they would work. But this one's just really intuitive, it's easy to use, there's no screen, so you're just like right into it and it's, it's very simple how they lay everything out on these pads. Now the next most important part, and this is almost optional, but it is really helpful to have. Having samples in here is great, but the sampling method is pretty simplistic. That's where this, the SP404, comes in handy. This is like a dedicated sampler, but it also has patterns you can create, and what's really cool is you can use this as an effects processor just with these parts alone, but you can also plug in external instruments here, so you can use this at the end of your setup as a sort of audio interface, and you can use it to master your track. What's awesome though is it's got a ton of internal effects that we can send all of these external inputs into, and we can also resample what we're putting into it and have it as a pad. It gets a little complex if you don't have these two synced, the uh, SP and the circuit, and I don't at the moment. It's all about timing when it comes to that. Now the next most important part is choosing your synthesizers. You don't have to have any synthesizers, especially if you're using a circuit, or even just using this. You can have samples that you get off of Splice, or you can put in samples that you make on a DAW, but if you really want to have a fun daw setup, you gotta get a couple synthesizers. I have a few. My main synth is the Mini Log, and this is about 500 bucks, I think. It can do so much, and it's so simple to program. So, I also like this because it's a poly synth. You can get multiple notes at a time. It's polyphonic, and so you can either sequence it on this, or you can perform on it, which is really cool, and I love the internal delay. I do like a full feedback, and you can just get these crazy drones going off. So that's gonna be one of the synths that I put in here, just because it's so easy to use, it sounds great, and I can get chords out of it. Then, I want something that acts as a bass, but also can do leads and some modulation. So we've got a few choices. There's this little guy, which is almost an extension of the Mini Log. If you get the Mini Log XD, this is built into it, but I don't really like the setup of plugging it in, and I don't have those mini minis. There's the Korg Volca FM, which is great, but I just never really find use for it in my music usually. It's fun just for experiments. There's the MS-1 that I've got over here, which is a monophonic synth, so it can only hold one note at a time. Really easy to use, but there's no patches. And then there's the Erebus by Dreadbox. And this thing is in almost all of my Dollis Jam videos, that and the mini log usually. But there's a reason, it sounds great, it's really fun to program, and it's semi-modular, so you can really program cool patches with it. These drum machines that are here, I've got the Volca drum and the TR-08. They're awesome, but it's almost pointless to waste a MIDI connection with these drums when you can either put them in the drum samples here or have them in the drum samples there. I've also got this four track cassette recorder and this is awesome and it could work as a mixer but I've got the SP over here and I mean, it's not a true cassette player but I can get warping out of it, I can get saturation and I can do so much more and I'd rather just keep this at the end instead of complicating it, having it go from circuit to SP to the cassette so I think we'll just keep that there because it looks cool, but not really use it at the moment. But that's the other thing about Dollis setups is they're incredibly, for lack of a better word, modular. You can unplug one thing, plug in another thing. But if you're just starting out, I think it's great to get some sort of dedicated brain or heart to the system, like the circuit tracks, and then 
you've got some internal synths built in, you've got samples, you've got things like that. The SP is a great way to start too. Any sort of sampler would be a great way to start. From there, I would honestly say polyphonic synth is the way to go because you have so much more control, you can do so much more with it, and you can make it monophonic. Most of these synths have a mono mode, a unison mode, things like that. But then you can do chords and things like that, and if you've got a dedicated sampler, you could record into it and make multiple chord progressions, leads, anything you want like that. So this is what we've got. I've talked a bit about which ones I'm planning to do, and I think this is a good start. So we'll have chords here, bass and leads here, samples if we want it, sequencing, and two more synths here, and then effects processing, mastering, but also sampling, and if we want, we can resample audio. So let's get this built up. I'm gonna get the stuff off that we don't need, and then let's have a jam. All right, so this is the setup. So I've got the circuit as the brain. I lifted it up so that I could have the SP here. MIDI one is going out into the Erebus. <laughs> And then MIDI 2 is the MIDI log. And all of the circuit sounds are going into the SP when the SP is being recorded. So you just have to hit this external source to get external input to go through here. Now what's really cool though is that we can set buses on here and we could put, let's say, a compressor and a 404 vinyl. And then now everything's being affected by this. So we can go to the 404 sound and we can up the noise just so you can hear it. There it is. We can get some lo-fi going, right? And we can record into the SP everything the circuit is doing. So if I load up a project, let's say this song, right? We could record that right into here. Let's set the time. I think it's 112. Yeah. Okay. So they're synced. So I have it set to wait. So as soon as I hit play, it's going to start recording. So here we go. And then now we should have that. So you can set loops from stuff we're making here and then make even more on it. We free up space on this limited machine. So that's one of the issues with this. It only has, you know, a couple of things each. But with this, you have almost unlimited potential now. So let's open a new project. We'll set it to 103, which is what the sample's at. So let's make a pattern on here with that bass sound and some drums. So this song is in F major, so we're going to hit F and go to the major instead of the minor. Okay, so uh, let's make a pattern. We'll start with some drums. All right, so that's our first pattern is just drums. And then I'm gonna copy that over and now we'll add some hi-hats and then we'll do another one where we put the bass in. I just want to have options to pull from. All right, now we'll copy that one over to three and we'll just add some hi-hat. Okay, perfect. So now we've got some drums and then drum and bass and then drum and bass and hi hat. some chords. I'm just going to put a click on really quick. We're going to need 
32 and we're probably going to need to lower the pattern down so let's do that So I went the lazy way and just programmed it in, but that's fine. Um, now we're just going to add the gate. So let's see if we hit these at the same time, will we get it right? sounds i'm just gonna end it here if you like these kind of videos leave a like comment subscribe i just launched a patreon if you want to help support me in a sustainable way you can head over to the link in the description i've got exclusive music you can get all these jams that i only have on youtube at the moment you can get them if you sign up on patreon I'll also be doing production live streams there's a bunch of other cool stuff if you want to check it out head to the link in the description I'd love to have you over there, but just hang out is more than enough. Until next time, thanks for watching.